Hi everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show, the UK's only TV programme that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being. Now, do your children spend a little too much time on the naughty step? Are you unsure why they keep misbehaving? Well, fortunately, we have family coach Sharon Lawton on hand to answer all your burning questions. Helena Shard is also here and she'll be giving us this week's mental health news in Behind the Fame. Then Dr. Rob Hicks will be answering all of your medical questions in Doctor's Answers. We'll also be watching Big Futures, a video courtesy of the Mental Health Channel, which shows how one school is helping children with emotional and behavioural issues. Then at the end of the show, I'll be giving you my top tips on how you can deal with difficult people, including those who love to misbehave. Now, children raised by single mothers are twice as likely to misbehave as those born into traditional two-parent families, research suggests. Family makeup, parental qualifications and household income have major effects on children's behaviour at a young age, which could lead to long-term consequences. The report also found that children with younger mothers had a much more difficult start to life than those with mothers over 30. But how responsible are parents for their children's behaviour? Well, according to another study, a negative parenting style characterised by harsh, inconsistent discipline was clearly associated with more severe child antisocial behaviour. And with disruption in English classrooms a clear problem, taking the right parental approach certainly seems to be vitally important. Well, we wanted to hear some of your thoughts, so we took to Twitter to find out. Peter believes the best cure for boredom and misbehaviour is engagement. Rick says, don't create company-wide rules to curb misbehaviour of the few. Berto echoes that thought. She complained when a teacher gives the whole class detention because one or two pupils misbehaved. Kimberly says, parents and guardian, it's not always the child misbehaving, it's what they see the adult doing to them or others. Kit says, when I misbehave as a child, my parents would send me to chair known as the pineapple chair. Oh, sounds painful. And Sydney blames IKEA. She says it is heaven for misbehaving children and adults with zero respect for personal space. So some interesting thoughts there. And we'll hear family coach Sharon Lawton's opinion later on in the show. But first, I just want to share some viewer comments with you because we do love to hear from you. Now, we asked you how you dealt with your naughty children. Isabella says, praise children when they behave, show love, attention and appreciation, feed with nutritious foods, lead by example. And after our show on organic produce, we asked you if you thought going organic was worth it. Chris I do says, yes, I do, and I think it's worth it. However, not all organic are good. You must check the labels. For example, the organic milk contains far less estrogen than the normal milk. We all know an increased amount of estrogen causes cancer. However, always check the company. All right, guys, so do keep your comments coming in. And if you want to send us an, e an email as well, you can do so on info at chrissybshow.tv. So now let's head to Helena Shard for this week's Behind the Fame. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. So what do we have in Behind the Fame today? Oh, we've got so many things. There's always so much news. Yes. I want to be able to share it all the time, but each week <laughs> we share lots and lots. So starting with Val Kilmer, he's 57 now, mm. but he'd been denying that he had cancer for a while for some reason, oh. but he has actually now revealed that he has cancer and okay. it's still cancer, so similar to Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. And he's being healed by prayer and love rather than modern sort of medicine, okay. which is nice. But I yeah. also feel, you know, I think a bit of rod, uh, modern medicine is good. Do you not think? Yeah. Well, the thing is, because, well, obviously I've been through cancer in my family as well, and I just saw, not obviously telling people not to do your, your traditional things that, mm. that are out there, but chemo and stuff I know is really bad for a person. And I know of lots of people, for example, that have changed their diet. And yes, yes. just through that alone. And also prayer is obviously works. Yeah. And yeah. They, they get over cancer through those kind of means. So mm. I think it really depends on the individual. Of, of course, if there's an emergency, of course you need to, you know, do whatever. Always follow your doctor's instructions. But I think some people just choose to try something else because yeah. they know that, you know, it chemo get it. and yeah. other stuff is very harmful for the body as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, so uh, moving on from there as well, I have a friend as well who's overcome breast cancer, so which yeah. is brilliant. Uh, but yeah. it was interesting having a chat with her because she was saying that the one thing that she needed was obviously people around her. Yeah. But lots of yeah. friends didn't know what to say and they actually mm. sort of ignored her really, which made her feel on her own, which yeah, I, I thought yeah. was a... Because you don't know, do you? Sometimes, sometimes yeah. it's good to ask the person, how yeah. can I help? 
Yeah, just... but can you imagine if everyone you know suddenly is not yeah, talking to you because it's horrible. It is uh, horrible. So um, it's just around me at the moment, it's cancer and different things. Yeah. And actually moving on to um, Sir Roger Moore, who yes. has passed away and has a short short bout of cancer. But he he was 89, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, he's had a really great life. But uh, you know, you always learn things, don't you, when people die as such. Yeah, um, yeah. He was fantastic. So many active friends that said he was such a humble guy and really, really? you know, he wasn't Aww. full of himself. He was just really endearing, which yeah, is great to nice. hear. Yeah. He's been in seven Bond films yeah. and, and, and so many different things. Um, written four books, four published books. Mm -hmm. But the, the main thing about him is he's, um, he was a, a UNICEF Goodwill ambassador. He was really good friends with Audrey Hepburn, and oh, she okay. got him into it. Yeah. Um, he got an OBE from the Queen, and he considers his UNICEF work his most, you know, uh, his greatest achievement, which is lovely. Oh, when you think nice. he was an actor yeah. for so long. That's really so, nice. Um, yeah, uh, really lovely. Um, moving on to Prince William, lovely mm. Prince William. So Philip, your following, favorite, yeah, oh, my favorite, Harry, one, Harry, well, yeah, Harry, one of my favourites. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he's uh, following in his mother's footsteps as always, and bringing lots of smiles to to mm. patients, uh, lots of children, in fact. So he's the um, president of the Royal Marsden, which is the largest cancer hospital. Yes. Um, and each year they treat sort of 50,000 patients a year. Mm -hmm. But he was doing one of his PR exercises because he goes there quite a lot, and it was quite sweet to see there was a young girl there having treatment, Daisy Wood, she was only six and he was like taking her blood pressure and she was just absolutely yeah, yeah. ecstatic. <laughs> but it's it's lovely to see him doing that. Oh, wow. um, and then moving on, I got another little bit of royal. So it was lovely to see um, Prince George and Princess Charlotte at Pippa Middleton's wedding. Mm. And they were being very, very good. Unlike Prince uh, William when he was Prince George's <laughs> age and he, and he was at Fergie's wedding and he just kept sticking his tongue out at everyone and yeah. being absolutely dreadful. <laughs> But they made this huge great big thing as though it was like a royal, big royal wedding, which it wasn't. Um, but good for her. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure it's all, all going to sure be she lovely. Loved she looked amazing. She did. Yeah, she, she did. really did. Really worked out. Mm. Did you see her bus muscles, her biceps, triceps? Or I didn't notice. I just noticed did the dress. Not? A beautiful dress, but obviously <laughs> been working out. So you know, you, you can. Anyway, we won't go to oh, that. Okay. <laughs> um, I love, what I love reading about is always the, the shining examples of kindness because mm. there's just so much going on, which is. I, I, so yeah, having said that, just to let people know that you don't have to be a celebrity to make the behind the fame se session because yeah. section because we believe that you know you deserve the recognition if you have done something great, who absolutely. no matter who you are, absolutely, and yeah. you do something extraordinary. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's a celebrity in that, in my That's eyes. Right. Absolutely. So, um, just a funny little one. So, the, uh, Metallica is a rock group, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there's a tribute group, Metallica group, who goes, goes around and, and does loads of performances. Yeah. But they actually had their, they were going out and they had their whole gear stolen from their trucks. Oh, so, no. all their, their um, you know, everything, their guitars, everything, no, they couldn't awesome. do anything. Yeah. And they got out on, in the media, and so the real Metallica group actually re bought everything for oh, them. Oh, wow. Isn't that sweet? I mean, That's they nice. were like, completely <laughs> annoyed. It's like, wow. But I mean, how nice to do that. Because nice. some people can be a little bit vain and sort of be like, oh, you know, these people yeah. are copying me. But they did that, which was, was lovely. That shows confidence as well, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> In their own abilities. Yeah, absolutely does. Um, and obviously, I mean, again, we've had some bad news, which always, you know, which is happening, which mm -hmm. is just so, so sad. But it's always thinking about the positive that comes out and talk about yeah. Manchester mm -hmm. and the terror attack, the positive that comes out and how good the people, uh, you know, do so much good yeah. and there's so much spirit with people and they get together and they really, really help. Mm -hmm. It's so moving and everyone feels so proud as well when they're doing it and just everyone running together and, and giving free hotel rooms, giving free food, that was being lovely, there actually, to, support, to hear that. Yeah. You know, all you know, NHS staff, just whatever, coming out and helping, everyone rushing out to give blood, mm -hmm. you know, homeless people on the street were giving, you know, hugs to, to people that were so upset. I mean, it just everyone was together, it was just the everyone spirit. Everyone pulls together, these things don't tear people apart, it just brings no, people closer. brings so. people closer. So again, just a, a lovely act of kindness. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, moving on to the Sheen effect, so actor Charlie Sheen, who um, disclosed he's HIV positive, this was a little mm -hmm. while ago, but I mean the good that came out of that is that everyone started thinking more about things, and in fact lots of people went out and bought the home testing kits, it went up mm. something like in that first week about 95%. Okay. But he's quite excited and humbled because obviously his admission, he feels like he's doing a good service now, yeah. he's helping people. Yeah. So which is really lovely. 
Um, Jonah Lumley, BAFTA Fellowship. I love Jo Lum. <laughs> she's so fun. I love her as Patsy. I think she's just yeah. full of spirit again. She's 71 and she just, I don't know, I think she brings so much joy. So, so lovely. Mm -hmm. All those years she's given on TV. Um, so she, yeah, good for her. I'm really excited for her. Um, so, moving on to, I mean, there's some f some fun ones. What do I do? So one more, one more just one more. Okay, <laughs> the best one. I'm, I'm just, I know okay, they're all just, good. I know they're, they're all good. I mean, this yeah. is just a sweet one, and I didn't know. So there is an agency called the Pet Detective Agency. I didn't mm -hmm. know this, but there is. And Molly is a two-year-old cocker spaniel, and she's the f the world's first dog trained to find and rescue missing cats. Oh. And apparently it's big business. Really? I sort of can understand. because Don't need the chips use. anymore, do we, on the camera? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. But anyway, I just thought, well, there you go. Yeah. Something special. Oh, wow. That's lovely. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, especially because I have a cat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Helena. And we'll see you again welcome. next time. Thank you. Well, don't go away because after the break, Sharon Lawton will be going through some of the leading causes and solutions to misbehaviour, both amongst children and adults and we'll be getting a delicious healthy recipe with Danielle Shine. But first, can you tell me which types of people get pleasure from the anger in others? Is it A, people with ADHD, B, people with high testosterone levels, or C, people with anger issues? Tune in after the break to find out. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone, your TV program for all things related to mental health, well-being and leading you to success. Now, before the break, I asked you what type of person gets pleasure from the anger in others? People with ADHD, people with high testosterone levels or people with anger issues? The answer is people with high testosterone levels. According to a psychology study by the University of Michigan, those people find anger expressions so rewarding that they will readily learn ways to encourage them. Well, whatever the cause of the misbehavior in your life, we have our family coach Sharon Lawton on hand to help sort it out. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Chris. Lovely to have you back on the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. So we are talking actually about misbehaving children, mm -hmm. but also misbehaving adults because, mm. you know, it can go both ways. Absolutely. But, but first of all, can you tell us maybe some of the leading causes of misbehavior in the family in okay. general? So there are a whole range of big variety of different reasons when we see misbehaviour. But for me, they sort of come under three main mm -hmm. topics. And one would be a personality or temperament of somebody in the family. Okay. The second would be um, an unmet need because we're all needs driven. And the third is a learnt behaviour of some kind. Okay. So I suppose if we sort of think about the sort of the first issue, so sort of around personality and temperament, because it's quite mm -hmm. an interesting place to start. When I'm working with parents and with families, I use a, a behaviour model called a DISC, and it's just a sort of a model of human behaviour. Mm -hmm. So what we tend to do is have a look at the different personality types within the family, because it can really give us sort of like a, a bit of a background as to why the misbehaviour okay. is happening. Mm -hmm. And often the reason why we find people's behaviour irritating, and for parents that find maybe children's behaviour irritating, mm -hmm. is sometimes because we don't understand and why they're behaving in that particular way. Okay. So children are different, but they can be predictably different. If we think about the different temperaments and the personalities of, of each member of the family, that way we can see if we click or clash because our own temperament as parents will influence how we parent and that okay. actually might not get the best out of that particular child where their personality is concerned. Okay, but in the case that there are clashes though, and obviously you will get different personalities mm. in a family, how do you deal with that then? Because okay. you don't want to obviously be irritated by your sibling or your parent or yeah. your child for So if I just give you come. a textbook example, um, so when we look at these different personality types, we, have, uh, we can have a personality type that is very driven, dominant, um, very competitive, mm -hmm. um, but sort of task driven and not sort of thinking about feelings. Um, we can have personalities that are uh, sort of driven by fun, influential, sort of very um, expressive, highly emotional. We can have a temperament that, or a personality that is very caring and supportive and nurturing. We can also have a temperament that actually is sort of um, very um, 
looking at the fine detail, have very high uh, expectations of themselves okay. and others. So just to sort of look at sort of the polar extremes and sometimes what I see in families is that a, um, a, a child might have what we call the dominant personality type. And so they are, um, they are very driven. For them, no doesn't mean no. It just okay. means ask again later in a different way. Um, and so if they are being parented by maybe somebody who has a personality that is like very sort of nurturing and caring and supportive, they might actually find it's really difficult and the, the D style personality is railroading in the home. So what we try to teach and what I try to coach parents if they are parenting a, um, a D style personality is because they hear everything through a I'm being bossed filter is to give choices and options, obviously guided choices and options mm -hmm. rather than you will do this because that style of personality will just dig their heels in and yeah. you know yeah. we're sort of a battle of wills. So little okay. tweaks like that, it allows the parent to be flexible, learn different tools because mm -hmm. we have to parent with the temperament rather than against it. Okay, I see. That's, mm. That really makes sense. Now, in terms of the, the learned behaviour that you mm. were talking about, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, of course, because it's not always the, the, the child um, and it's mm. not always the, the temperament or the personality. So where learned behaviour is concerned, children learn by what they see and what they watch. Yes, we learn by rewards and motivators and that's what we do as parents. But we also learn as children by what we see and what's reflected back to us by the influential people in our lives. Mm -hmm. It's called social learning theory, basically. So I often say to parents, you know, don't worry that your children not, aren't listening to you, worry that they're watching you. So they're watching Ooh, you good. every time you put the phone down from your in-law and you have a little moan about them because <laughs> they've irritated you. Or they're watching you on how you deal with stress. How do you deal with the situation if somebody's pulled out in front of you and cut you up in your car? You know, are you calm about it and breathe and, you know, or do you start sort of shouting and getting all stressed and frustrated? Um, do you get um, cross and angry at them because they haven't done something they've asked you to do? but it, equally you don't keep your promises to them. So, you know, it's about sort of that sort of do as I say, don't do as I do. We need mm. to make sure we're walking our talk. So, as I say, we can sometimes mirror that behaviour um, and then wonder why we get into that, don't shout at me, I am not shouting at you, yes you are, you know, so our children are just copying that behaviour. Okay. So it sort of means that we, if we've got family rules, they need to be family rules. So rules for everybody in the family, not just the children. Now Sharon, sometimes the issue maybe isn't the parents, but actually what the kids are learning at school. So how do you deal with kids that are misbehaving because of what they're seeing and experiencing at school as well? Mm. So again, it sort of fits quite nicely along the sort of learnt behaviour really. Mm. Um, because all of us do things for a reason. It, it, you know, our behaviour is needs driven. And where uh, peer pressure is concerned, it's a real tricky one, I think, for parents yeah. as well. Because sometimes young people see that maybe um, a, a member of their friendship group or their peer group has behaved in a certain way and they've actually had a good result from that. You know, they've mm. got what they wanted. Or sometimes it might be that that young person has seen um, that the challenging behaviour is all about trying to behave in a certain way to fit in with that peer group. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So um, young people want to fit in um, and certain behaviours might be they feel that that's expected of them. So mm -hmm. that might be some of the reasons why. Now when they bring that back into the home of course that's when it becomes really really tricky. Okay. Um, what I would say is it's no good starting nagging, criticising and, and sort of really sort of going to town about a particular friendship group because we know that once we start being negative about those friends they become even more yeah, attached to yeah. them so we have to be really careful about how we approach that so I mean I would say that um, try to keep calm as you can don't criticize the friends talk about friendships what a good friend is um, their choices around behavior mm -hmm. um, what those particular consequences are around maybe the poor behavior that they are they're choosing to okay. adopt um, and then of course around all of that be thinking about okay so we need to keep the the boundaries at home consistent we need to make sure that the young person knows that actually within the home we you know we are going to stick to our particular family okay. rules um, and this consistency is really really important brilliant Sharon thank you so much Pleasure. and we'll see you again very soon for another family and parenting Look forward um, to it. topic <laughs> all right Sharon thank you
So everybody, sometimes there are children that actually misbehave because of maybe an empty stomach and with growth spurts often increasing appetite, it's important that we make sure our children are snacking on the right things. Hi everybody, did you know vitamin B12 is crucial to brain health and that severe deficiency of this vitamin can put you at risk for things like Alzheimer's and dementia? A good way to get a great dose of vitamin B12 is to eat foods like wild caught fish, field mushrooms and fresh organic eggs. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious, easy and affordable frittata right now using fresh organic eggs. This dish is great hot or cold and it also freezes really well. So come and join me in the kitchen and let's get cooking. Egg frittatas are delicious, nutritious and so easy to make. They are a wonderful way to increase your intake of healthy vitamins and minerals to support your mind and body. In this frittata, I'm adding broccoli, which is a great green dose of plant protein, as well as vitamins A and K. A quick tip, don't throw away the stalks. Use them too, they're packed with great nutrition. Carrots add more goodness, like vitamins and dietary fiber. They're also a great dose of beta carotene, which protects your cells from damage. Add nutrient-rich Asian greens, like boiled bok choy and spinach. Saute some red capsicum in a little olive oil to add great flavor. I've also included strips of broccoli, carrot, and beetroot left over from a salad I made the day before. Don't be afraid to add lots of ingredients that are different in size and cooked in a variety of ways. All of these factors add great flavor to the end result. I love making these frittatas on a Friday night based on what I have left in my fridge. It keeps meals interesting and is fun to create different flavors each time. While your vegetables are cooking, shave some cheese for the topping. Mozzarella, manchego or parmesan works really well, as does a variety of dairy-free cheese. No frittata would be complete without some antioxidant-rich onion, which you can chop easily and safely using the technique I am displaying. Before slicing, place your onions in the fridge for a couple of minutes. This stops them from releasing the chemical irritant that can make your eyes water. Saute in olive oil with some garlic powder and sea salt to boost flavors. Once your onion has browned and all other vegetables have been cooked, it's time to start building your frittata. Look at the size of your frittata dish as a guide to how many vegetables you can fit in it. You can't really go wrong because you can always adjust the amount before adding in the eggs. As long as there's room for the eggs without everything overflowing, you're on your way to creating a fantastic frittata. Season with cracked pepper and fresh herbs. Thyme is great because it has many antiseptic and antifungal characteristics to support your immune system. Once combined, pour your mixed vegetables into your dish and use a spoon or spatula to spread them out. Depending upon the size of your frittata dish, crack six to eight eggs, which provide a wonderful dementia-fighting dose of B12, vitamin D, and omega-3 fats into a food processor and blend on high for a few seconds to combine well. Pour evenly over the vegetables in your dish. Add some fresh or dried herbs like parsley before topping with cheese. Place in a preheated oven for at least 40 minutes. If you find the cheese on top has begun to brown and burn, but your frittata still needs more time to cook, cover the top with some foil and place it back in the oven until you're happy with the texture. Enjoy this frittata warm or cold depending upon the weather and be sure to include a small salad which will aid digestion and provide added nutrition. That's all for now, see you again soon. Thank you very much to Danielle. Well, after the break, I'll be joined by Dr. Rob Hicks, who will be answering all of your medical questions, including what to do if you have inverted nipples, a penis that changes shape, and if you are coming off the pill. Tune in after the break to hear Rob's answers. Hi, I'm Chris 
Lucy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBShow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. So now it's time for our weekly Doctor's Answers with our very own Dr. Rob Hicks. And if you have a question for Rob, please do contact us on info at chrissybshow.tv. Welcome to the show, Rob. Hi, Chris. So we have some interesting questions for you today, Rob. Excellent. And I have to say, some of these are, are quite brave questions. And I do want to say to you guys out there, don't be embarrassed about asking absolutely anything. We will not read out any names. So if there is something bothering you, please don't hesitate to email. So the first question is, hi, Rob. Is it normal for my penis to change shape? I'm in my early 30s and I'm starting to notice a curve near the end. Is this a muscle problem? This can be perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. um, but it may also be a condition called Peyronie's uh, disease, which is where the penis, when it's erect, will bend slightly to, to one way or, or the other. And this can actually be uncomfortable for a man and it can make sex difficult sometimes if there's quite a significant curve. Um, the thing to do is, is, to, is, to, is to get the penis checked out by, by your doctor. But one of the things that if it is Peyronie's disease, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be treated. It only needs treatment if it's causing you symptoms or it's causing you problems. So for example, it is uncomfortable or it, means, or it does hurt when you have an erection or it means that you know, when you're trying to have sex with your partner, it's uncomfortable or, 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 or very difficult. Because this condition will sometimes get better on its own after a number of months. If it does need treatment, then you can inject steroids in, into the area. Um, or sometimes, you know, in rare cases, surgery is performed to remove the plaque because a, a bit of tissue forms actually makes the penis bend. And you can either remove that bit of tissue or you can actually put some tissue on the opposite side to correct the curvature. But the bottom line is get it checked out to make sure that nothing else is going on. Okay, is it life-threatening in any no, way? No, it's not. Because when you say disease, it sounds no, low. It's not life-threatening, mm -hmm. but you can imagine the impact it has yeah, on a man's self-esteem, yeah. self yeah. self-confidence, and, and indeed sexual enjoyment mm -hmm. if, if things are not working properly or, you know, or if it's uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Okay, so thanks for that question. Next question. How long should it take for your period to regulate after you've come off the pill? And is it true that taking the pill can affect you from having children later on in life? Well, when a woman stops taking the, um, the contraceptive pill, generally speaking, for most women, within about two to four weeks, they'll get, they'll get a period. Now, saying that, sometimes the periods can be irregular for a number of months. So you need to generally leave about, about three months um, before a normal routine cycle uh, re reappears. The reality is, is that it's very, very, very unlikely that coming off the pill um, or being on the pill will affect a woman's fertility. Um, and that's you know, explained by the fact that many women who do come off the fit pill um, and are having unprotected sex find themselves pregnant within a matter of weeks. Okay, next question. Can children get arthritis? My son is complaining of pain in his wrists and elbows and I can't think of any other reasons. The answer is children can get arthritis. Oh. However, there are a host of more likely reasons for mm. these symptoms. So some of the common things uh, that cause these symptoms in children are the activities and the exercise and the sport that they're doing. So it might be related to that, particularly if maybe they're playing table tennis or they're playing badminton or they're playing any racket sport, because obviously that's going to affect the wrists and the elbows and the arms. The other thing to think about nowadays is we're increasingly seeing children with repetitive strain injury because they're using tablets, mm, they're using true. game consoles, mm -hmm. they're texting, and so they're getting the symptoms that traditionally we saw in adults who worked in front of computers, you know, who were obviously using keyboards and using their hands and their, and their arms you know, over and over and over. So I would suggest that actually you have a checkup, your son has a checkup with a doctor, uh, particularly if any of the joints are swollen, red, or they feel hot, or they're very, very uncomfortable. But I su suspect that it will be down to either the exercise or the activity that's being done. And that might mean doing some warm-ups before exercise, doing, doing, or, or actually cutting down on the use of video consoles, mm. you know, texting and tablets, etc. 
Very good point, Rob. Okay, next question. What are the common signs of iron deficiency? Well, iron deficiency uh, causes the most common form of anemia. Um, and the, num the sort of symptoms that people get with iron deficiency anemia, tiredness, uh, fatigue, they may feel short of breath, they may get palpitations. Actually, their complexion is often quite pale and people will say, mm. you know, you're looking a bit pale, you're looking a bit pasty. Whether you have iron deficiency is actually very easily tested for with a simple blood test. So if you're concerned about that, then, then ask your doctor to run that blood test. Iron deficiency anemia is very common in, in women who have heavy periods, for example, because, of course, you, they lose a lot of of, of haemoglobin in the blood with their monthly periods, even though they may be having a very, very good diet. In the meantime, make sure you have lots of iron-rich foods, so red meat, for example, green leafy ve vegetables. Um, and I wouldn't suggest taking an iron supplement unless you're medically advised to do so, you know, having had a test that says, look, you are iron deficient. Just, just a question on the back of that, Rob. Um, with things like maybe a thalassemia trait, mm. your, your blood test will come up mm. as though you're iron deficient. How, yes. how can you tell then if it's really iron deficiency or if it's something like You can thalassemia. run further tests and, okay. and, uh, yeah, and, and, and look at a person's sort of family history and their cultural history. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Okay, another question. Hi Rob, I was born with inverted nipples and was told they would grow later in life. I am now in my late 20s and they still remain inverted. Is there anything I can do? The simple answer is if it's a problem for you, it is possible to have uh, nipple correction surgery performed. Now in the UK this is unlikely to be available on the NHS oh. unless it's caused in severe psychological distress or some kind of physical problem. Mm. Um, but the question really is, you know, is it causing a problem or is it, is it simply that actually you'd, you know, you're just concerned about it? Um, but I, as I said, you can have the surgery performed but um, whether you would get this paid for by the NHS um, it's not common for the NHS to support this sort of surgery because generally it's seen as cosmetic. Okay. All right. And one last question, Rob. How bad... Uh, this keeps coming up, doesn't it? How bad is extensive yeah. hours in front of the computer for my eyes? What is the maximum amount of time I should spend looking at screens? This is... Of course, it's a common question yeah. now because we all spend so much time sat in front it's of true. screens. It's true. Um, the good news is scientific research suggests that it's very, very unlikely that mm -hmm. being in front of a, a screen for long periods of time will cause long-term eye damage. Okay. However, <laughs> what we've all learned is that it can cause some unpleasant symptoms. So being in front of a screen for a long time can cause blurred vision, it can cause double vision, it can cause eye irritation and redness, and indeed dry eyes. The other thing, leaving the eyes aside for a moment, is that it can cause headaches, and it can also cause neck pain because of the posture that many of us are sort of just hunched over. So my advice to anybody who uses a, um, a screen, and I'm doing my best myself to follow my own <laughs> advice, mm. is follow the, what we call the 20-20-20 advice, which is every 20 minutes, look 20 feet away for about 20 seconds to give your eyes a rest. Adjust the screen brightness of your, of your screen Make sure that you're positioned correctly in front of your screen, so basically that your eyes are about 20 to 28 inches away from the screen, and blink often. When we're looking at a screen, we don't blink as often as we would normally mm. do, and this causes irritation and dryness of the eyes. So you actually have to consciously think about doing extra blinking, and you can do that whilst you're looking your 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. I, I also I think it's important obviously to get your your eyes checked out because I, I was having trouble with my own um, computer mm. I changed I had a PC and then I changed to a Mac and then I couldn't find the way to sort of make the text bigger without making the screen blurrier yeah. if there's anyone that knows how to do that by the way because I did some research and they were saying it's not possible but if you do know how to do that please do let me know <laughs> info at chrissybisha.tv so anyway, I got my eyes tested and I, I needed, I did have a prescription. Mm -hmm. So I got my glasses the other day and now I can see very well, you know, you know, it's, yeah. it's made things a lot easier. I'm not getting so tired anymore. And so, you know, do get your eyes checked out as well in case you Absolutely. do need, you do need yeah. glasses. Particularly if you're getting symptoms, you know, yeah. often the optometrist for an eye test is, is the first port of call. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll tell you whether actually it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vision problem mm -hmm. rather than the fact that you're suffering yeah. from being in front of a screen. That's right. Yeah. Rob, thank you so much. Pleasure. And we'll see you again next time you on your weekly Doctor's Answer segment. Yeah.
Thank you. All right, guys, and don't forget, if you have a question for Rob, please do email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. Well, after the break, we'll be watching a video courtesy of the Mental Health Channel about how one school is helping children with emotional and behavioural issues. And I'll be giving you my tips on how you can deal with difficult people. But first, can you answer this question? Why do people generally like to voice their negative opinions? Is it A, because it restores their own self-esteem, B, it's differences in personalities, or C, they're just being truthful? Tune back in and find out after the break. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, where today we have been talking all about misbehaviour in children and adults actually as well. Now before the break I asked you why people generally like to voice their negative opinions. Is it A, because it restores their own self-esteem, B, because of differences in personalities, or C, because they're just being truthful? Of course it's A, to restore self-esteem, seeing the humiliation in others helps to make us feel better about ourselves and our own issues. So just remember that next time you try to humiliate someone. So now I wanted to share this video with you from the Mental Health Channel which shows how one school in Texas, Momentous Institute, are giving children in poverty the tools they need to regulate their emotions. And as we heard earlier, household income has a major effect on children's behaviour at a young age. So support such as this is vital for reducing stress. Let's take a look. I'm Stephanie and I'm 17 years old. The old neighborhood I used to live in, a lot of the children didn't care about their education. A lot of them did drugs. There was always a crime scene or people stealing into homes. We have a lot of really strong families and involved families, but still the areas in which they're growing up and the things they see on their way to and from school are enough to really put kids in a state of high alert. And then it's hard to learn when you're in a state of high alert. If I would not have um, attended Momentus and would have gone to the neighborhood schools, then I feel like I wouldn't have cared so much about my education and I wouldn't be the person who I am right now. We fix it. We learn from mistakes. El próximo año va a ser wow. Excelente. Porque lo estamos haciendo con mucho esfuerzo. Yo voy a estar contigo siempre. Mi nombre es Leti. Trabajo limpiando oficinas. Yo vengo con una preparación de mi escuela. Yo fui hasta la high school y estudié un año de universidad en México, pero aquí estoy tratando de volver de sacar mi GD. Tengo dos hijas, sus nombres son Stephanie y Andrea. Quiero demostrarle que a mi familia, a mis hijos, que si yo puedo, ellos también pueden. Y es cierto, tú vas a hacer más cosas con hechos que con palabras. Momentous Institute is an organization that's been around for 95 years and we're dedicated to kids and social emotional health. Many of our students are growing up in poverty and all that comes with that and we exist to prove that if you have an extraordinary start where social emotional health is prioritized, then you will have an extraordinary outcome. Bye. For many families who are dealing with poverty, they're also dealing with toxic stress. So what we see is that by age four, if you're dealing with toxic stress and poverty, you're a year and a half behind your peers academically. What we find is if you give kids the tools to manage their emotions and to self-regulate, they end up being able to relax, being able to sit down and work with a teacher to expand their understanding. Hi, Mr. Teach. Hi. How are you? I was in Momentous when I was three, and I followed through till fifth grade. I came back to see Mr. Teach to have a more one-on-one -on -one time to talk about the different universities that there are to see which ones benefit me in improving my essays. 
I've gotten them reviewed, but you, have? you can yeah, you can probably help me out too. Okay. Ninety nine percent of our former Momentus students graduate from high school and eighty six percent of our students enroll in higher education. What do you want to major in? Nursing. Okay. And they have a great nursing program. Mm -hmm. It's not just to let them know about the college admissions process and our scholarship, but also let them know that you can do it. You have that support. It's a community. It's not just the students, it's us together. Good morning, Miss Gloria. How are you today? Hoy estamos ayudando aquí en la escuela. Es nuestro servicio de voluntario. Me gusta. Es una parte de convivir con los niños. Y otra parte es un requisito de la escuela, pero lo más importante es convivir con ellos. You really enjoy your lunch? Better than pizza? No. Okay. Me gusta hacer esto y también es que para cuando tú les demuestras a tu hijos que tú haces algo para otras personas, la mejor manera de, enseñ de enseñarles es no con palabras, sino haciéndolo con hechos. Yo la escuela la considero como una familia, la relación entre los alumnos y los demás papás, y es muy bonito, la verdad, es la, la relación es una familia, somos una familia en la escuela. Every day we practice mindful breathing. The kids are very accustomed to it because they've done this type of practice now for many, many years. It's a way for us to bring the energy down in our classroom, get the kids back focused on uh, what's next in academics. This is just something that we honestly believe in and feel like it really does help the kids to be able to focus and know that this is a strategy that they can use um, just in their daily lives, just to calm down or manage life. Thank you very much to the Mental Health Channel for that video and if you'd like to know more about them please do visit our website chrissybisha.tv and click on our contributors section. So now here are my tips for dealing with difficult or negative people. Now I do think that you need to give people a chance even if they have a bad reputation for being a difficult person 
because they are difficult for a reason. So you don't know what that person could have been through in their life to cause them to behave the way they do. So how do you actually deal with these people? My first point is to be aware. So know exactly who these people are and when you're with them or around them, be on your guard or else you can get dragged down. So are these people maybe in your family, among your circle of friends, maybe at work? Make sure you know who they are, identify them from before so you can prepare yourself. My second point is to hear what they have to say. So don't assume that everything that is going to come out of their mouth is going to be negative just because of perhaps things that people have told you. I have a situation that I went through that I will never forget and it really taught me a lesson. I was actually warned about someone that I was about to start working with and I was told, you know, this person is really difficult, be careful, be on your guard, um, you know, don't, don't get stuck. You know, there's a few things that the person said to me, just keep your distance basically. And the person that told me these things, they're, they're not, they weren't a gossip or anything, they genuinely were looking out for me. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this person a chance and get to know them because I know over time people can change as well. So when I, when I was in contact with this person, yes, some of the things that were said about this person were true in terms of that she was quite harsh and very sort of uh, the way she spoke was, was quite, um, quite, could be quite rude sometimes. But then one day we were having a conversation, she actually opened up and told me how about her upbringing and saying how she grew up with brothers, that only brothers, she was the only girl in the family and she grew up with people and her brothers were very rough and the way they used to talk and her, her mum, for example, wouldn't let her do anything around the house. So she had a, a quite a, um, I would say not a difficult upbringing, but it was quite different. She didn't really learn how to express herself well. And it, everything made sense. And she actually ended up being a very good friend of mine. She was so lovely. We got on so well. And I actually went back to this person that told me originally about, you know, be careful. And I told her and she said, you see, Chris, sometimes we can get people so wrong because we don't actually, you know, know what they've been through or why, <clears throat> or why for example, they, they act and behave in certain ways. So I, I always say, you know, hear what they have to say. Don't always assume that this person is, is, is bad or has these behaviors when you know you could find out a bit more about them first. My third point is give them a chance to vent. So sometimes the person may genuinely need to let off some steam and we all need to do that from time to time when we're going through a tough time just to express how we feel but there does have to be a limit so give them a few minutes and if there's no sign that they're actually going to stop then I would say you need to step in and actually say something which takes me on to my next point don't agree or stay silent. So if you don't actually agree with what they are saying or maybe they're gossiping about someone, say something. If you don't, you will end up with a bad reputation too and this person will think that they've actually found someone that agrees with them in everything. So don't just let them sit there and throw poison around. If, like I said, if you don't agree, just say, well, hang on a minute, I don't think it's that case and, and don't you think you're being a bit extreme? Say something, because if you stay silent as well, you'll feel uncomfortable, you'll feel bad about yourself for actually sitting there and listening to all this, all this negativity. So it's always, it's always useful to actually, not just to stay silent. I know sometimes you feel a bit bad to say something, but for your own sake, it's not good just to sit there quietly and listen to all of that, which actually also follows on to the next point, which is help them to see. So you don't have to be rude, but you do need to be firm. And you can say things, look, have you tried seeing things in this way? Or maybe that's not what our boss was saying or thinking. So give them other alternatives because sometimes people, there are certain people that do look at things in such a negative way and anything another person says or does, there always has to be like a bad intention or it's because of something negative. When actually people say certain things not actually meaning what that person is thinking so it happens all the time so try to help them to see alternatives about why that was said maybe or why that was done in that way and 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 so their mind isn't always on the negatives and then if you've tried all of that and it hasn't worked and this you feel that this person is just dragging you down the next point is for your own sake is to cut them off and you know it is sometimes quite difficult to do that you know especially if it's someone uh, close to you or someone in your family. I'm not saying, of course, that you won't talk to members in your family. When I say cut off, I don't mean be rude or, or you know, just take them off your list for anything. I, I'm just saying 
there are times when you have to distance yourself. So if you find that negativity starting or the person's gossiping or it's starting to affect you, then just make your excuses and just leave the room or, or talk about something else. There is a time when you actually have to say, look, enough is enough. Well, everyone, we have reached the end of today's program. But if you have any comments that you would like to share about this show or any of our programs, or you'd like to ask a question or participate in this program, then do get in contact with us. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs>